It's the Phoenix, Arizona weather discussion for Wednesday, the 15th of December. I'm Michael Groff. After a windy and chilly night, temperatures will be substantially lower today following the passage of that cold front. But a gradual warming trend will take place as we head into the weekend with dry conditions continuing. As we get to next week, the weather turns considerably more uncertain. A lot of question marks. Could we see another round of unsettled weather, cooler temperatures, and what about that forecast for Christmas? We'll talk about all of it and everything else going on, too. First, as we check out the almanac from yesterday, 73 degrees the afternoon high, 52 was the low. That occurred at 11.59 p.m. as the cold front was moving through. And before midnight, we picked up a trace of rain at Sky Harbor just after midnight, three hundredths of an inch of rain. I told you this system would be fast moving and probably wouldn't produce very much precipitation. And for the most part, it did not. We also had a wind gust of 51 miles per hour clocked at Sky Harbor, but that was not the strongest gust up on Pinal Peak, which is located just to the south southwest of Globe. They had a wind gust of 74 miles per hour. That is hurricane force, folks. Now, as we take a peek out there right now at 720 a.m., the sun coming up over the valley, a few clouds around. And we are at 46 degrees at Sky Harbor, dew point at 34, relative humidity 61%. The wind has gone calm and the barometer is rising. Checking out the weather pattern across the country right now. And you can see that dynamic, vigorous upper trough that came through here last night. It is now moving out toward the Plain States, going negative tilt as it does. And that's going to set the stage for a very volatile, potentially historic day weather-wise over a good portion of the nation's midsection. And you can see what's going on right now on the watch warning map. We have a number of high wind warnings for most of the central plains, the northern plains, and the Great Lakes states. And that's just from gradient winds with this system that will be gusting as high as 60 to 70 miles per hour at times. And that doesn't count the thunderstorms that will be developing later today and tonight, which we'll talk about in a moment. And if you're living up there across parts of Minnesota, Iowa, or Wisconsin, you're going to experience just about every type of weather that Mother Nature can throw at you over the next 16 hours or so. The warm air is already surging northward out ahead of this system, and as it overruns the cold ground, some of that ground still has snow on it, especially over Minnesota. Uh, We're seeing dense fog. In fact, dense fog advisories are in effect right now. Uh, It's going to be warm throughout much of the Plain States, all the way up to Minneapolis, St. Paul. They will be warmer than we are. Minneapolis, Des Moines, La Crosse, Milwaukee, Chicago, all of them will be substantially warmer than we are here in Phoenix today. Uh, Des Moines may well be about 15 degrees warmer than Phoenix this afternoon. That's unusual in and of itself, especially here in the month of December. Practically unheard of. And then by later tonight, once that cold front comes through again, very windy conditions and then a flash freeze will likely take place across western Minnesota and Iowa, where temperatures will drop from the 50s down into the teens in a matter of just a few hours. So very unusual setup. And as if that's not enough, as mentioned, the atmosphere turning very volatile this afternoon with that cold front approaching. So as we look at the convective outlook, the SPC has defined a moderate risk of severe storms. That's level four out of five. And that's unusual to see even in the peak of severe weather season in the middle of the summer, let alone here in December. I can't remember ever seeing a moderate risk defined in December in the upper Midwest. And so uh, the major risks from thunderstorms that develop today, obviously strong, damaging straight line winds. This is the probabilistic output from the uh, SPC. And they have a 45% chance of damaging winds. And you see that crossed hatch area there. That indicates significant wind damage is possible. And you think 45% doesn't sound all that great. But that that means within that circle there, there is a 45% chance of damaging wind within 25 miles of any given point. So that is very significant. And we see that extending all the way up into parts of southern Minnesota to near Minneapolis-St. Paul. And then as we check out the tornado probabilistic outlook here, and you see that 10% circle over much of Iowa and up to southern Minnesota to, once again, close to Minneapolis-St. Paul, and the crossed hatch region there means that the potential exists in that zone for a significant tornado. And that, of course, means a, a tornado that could be EF2 or stronger. And everyone is thinking immediately about the tornado outbreak we had last Friday and early Saturday morning across Arkansas, Tennessee, Mississippi, Kentucky, uh, Illinois, and Indiana that cost dozens of people their lives. The last official count I saw was 88 people. 
and there's still, uh, what, hundreds unaccounted for and many more injured. So we don't want to see that again. And I don't think this is going to be as substantial an outbreak. This will be more of a duratio type of system that develops, a, a QLCS or a duratio, quasi-linear convective system, a very fast-moving line of thunderstorms. And when I mean fast, uh, this line will develop this afternoon, probably after about 3, 4, 5 p.m. Central Time, racing to the northeast at 60 to 80 miles per hour. We'll see wind gusts over 70, maybe 80 miles per hour with that. And again, the potential of a few intense tornadoes is possible. And we just don't talk about that here in the month of December very often. And to highlight this even further, I showed you this yesterday for Phoenix, but this is a forecast sounding for Des Moines, Iowa. And this is at 6 o'clock Central Time this evening. And unlike the Phoenix sounding yesterday, which really indicated no real chance of significant severe weather, uh, not the case for Des Moines. I mean, all indications are for a very volatile afternoon and early evening period here. You've got surface dew points up in the 60s. You've got very uh, good mixing ratios, a lot of cape in the atmosphere, very unstable air, air parcels freely able to rise through the atmosphere. You've got steep lapse rates. You've got some dry air in the mid-levels. You've got helicity. And when we talk about helicity, that means a rotating updraft. Uh, that is air that moves kind of like a corkscrew as it rises through the atmosphere. And we need that for rotation for potential tornadoes. And just every indication here, you've got, look at that hodograph. It's got that classic severe weather look. This is uh, ostensibly a loaded gun sounding. And then you can see the possible hazard type on the right there is PDS tornado. That means particularly dangerous situation tornado. Now, this does not mean that there will be a tornado that rumbles through Des Moines, Iowa tonight. But it does mean that the potential exists. All of the ingredients are sitting right there, ready to go for the p potential of a tornado later this afternoon and this evening across the upper Midwest, including Iowa, Minnesota, parts of Wisconsin, and some of the adjacent states as well. So something that is worth keeping an eye on. All right, as we bring it back closer to home, here's the precipitation outlook. This is valid through next Wednesday morning. Rain amounts in Phoenix, and we could see something way out there right at the end of this period by next Wednesday, and that's something that we'll have to talk about here, but rain amounts uh, for the most part over the next seven days will be rather light, but then maybe something beyond that. And we'll talk about that in more detail right now as we get to the models. Here we go. This is the GFS, the 06Z run, valid at 2 o'clock this afternoon. Got a upper low there off of the Pacific Northwest Coast. There's our trough going negative tilt into the plain states. That is not a good look. And down at the surface today, it's going to be one of those days that is a maybe a historic weather day. Meteorologists will remember this one for a while, potentially, across the plains. But here in Phoenix, hey, looks pretty good. Mostly sunny sky. A cool day. High temperatures mid to upper 50s. So we'll finally see readings below average. Tonight, clear sky, and it will be colder. Lows in most valley locations will be in the 30s. A few locations may well dip down to freezing, especially in the outlying valley spots. So you could even get some frost. You might want to even cover up those plants if you live, say, up there, North Scottsdale, Fountain Hills, carefree, as uh, readings could get down to near or maybe even just a degree below freezing tonight. And then tomorrow, sunny, just a tad warmer. Highs upper 50s and low 60s. On Friday, another little short wave is going to come through here. We'll see an increase in clouds, call it partly sunny, uh, but I don't think we're going to see any rain out of that feature. High temperatures, low to mid 60s, and then the weekend looks perfect. High temperatures, mid to upper 60s for both Saturday and Sunday, just a few passing high clouds, no big deal. Then as we go to next week, there is a fairly high degree of forecast uncertainty that begins to enter the mix here. We are fairly confident that a broad trough will develop along or just off the West Coast, maybe even encompassing the Pacific Northwest, and some energy may move down the California coast. Just how far south that gets, ultimately, that remains to be seen. But here in Phoenix on Monday, we'll probably see just a few clouds, high temperatures again, mid to upper 60s, and dry conditions. Tuesday looks fairly dry, too. But again, we could see some rain and snow for the Sierra across California and potentially moving up toward the Great Basin. Around here, partly sunny sky would take over. High temperatures probably pretty close to 70. Then it gets more interesting. This is a week from today, Wednesday the 22nd. Got a deep upper low off the Pacific Northwest Coast, broad troughing to the west of us. 
and a very deep layered west southwest flow develops, maybe even tapping into the subtropical jet. And the GFS is kind of showing the old atmospheric river getting cranked up here over the southwest. So this could potentially bring widespread rain to the region, but temperatures would be fairly warm, so the snow levels would be rather high. But this is a different look than what we've seen in previous runs. But again, this is supported by some of our ensemble guidance. We've been showing you that for several days. Some of our ensemble members indicate significant precipitation by the middle and latter part of next week. And so now the deterministic guidance is beginning to buy into this atmospheric river solution. But again, this is a week out and we have seen just too many solutions to buy into this just yet. But that is a an idea that's on the table. So we could see some significant rain in here next week. Let's hope so. And then as we go out 10 days, this is Friday the 24th. It's Christmas Eve and the GFS has a potent short wave along the California coast. A deep southwesterly flow here in Arizona, so the clouds would be around and rain would be looming just to the west of us. And then just for the heck of it, let's go out to Christmas Day. And the GFS says, hey, it could be a wet Christmas. How about a negative tilt short wave coming into Arizona? That's an interesting look. That could create showers, maybe thunderstorms and windy conditions. So... It's just too early right now to pin down any specifics. Obviously, this is still out there in fantasy land, but our ensemble guidance and now our deterministic output is indicating, and we like to look at trends. The trend is for more broadly unsettled weather over the Western United States. And that could mean that we could see some precipitation here in Arizona for the middle and latter part of next week and maybe into Christmas Day. All right, looking at rainfall for Phoenix, this is going out through the 30th of the month. And this is coming off of the GFS Ensemble, and the mean is up there around three quarters of an inch. The control member pretty close to an inch and a quarter. And again, highlighting that uncertainty and the possibility of active weather uh, for the second half of December. And then temperatures off of the national blend of models. Highs on most days will return to the 60s. Overnight lows in the 40s, and then next week, if we start to see more moisture in here, those lows could get a bit warmer, maybe around 50 degrees or into the low 50s, with a lot of clouds and precipitation around. And that's going to do it for the Phoenix, Arizona weather discussion for today. My next video, do back here tomorrow morning. If you enjoy these videos, be sure to subscribe, like, share, click that notification bell, leave your comments, questions, and suggestions. And yeah, I invite you to check out my streaming station, KMGX. There's just a ton of music over there. We have a lot of fun doing that. It's myself and the one and only Michelle involved in the programming. Uh, you can listen by uh, saying to your smart speaker, Alexa, play KMGX live. Or of course, I, as always, will leave a link to it in the description. All right, thank you so much for watching. All of your continued support, it is greatly appreciated. You guys be safe out there and have yourselves a phenomenal Wednesday.